So we need the Kentucky take. Uh, a lot of challenges there in the SEC, and we saw what Kirby Smart was able to do over the last few weeks in closing a dynamic class. Butch Jones has had his success, maybe falling off a little bit, but ton, maybe the East is coming back at this point. Uh, maybe that's not good <laughs> news for Wildcat fans because it appears as though you're gaining some steam as well. So according to 24-7 Sports, this is definitely a top 30 class. Uh, four four-star recruits out of uh, 24 total signees. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, top 30 class, as you said, by all of the um, by all of the scouting services. Um, you know, the coaching staff thinks that you know when this is all said and done, it could be you know their best class, even better than the uh, the 2014. You know, which featured Drew Barker, Matt Elam, and a host of others. Um, the, to say that they're excited about this class would be a, a vast understatement. So, Kevin, who do you like? Uh, we see a lot of names here again. It's 24 signees. Can you pick out a few that, based on what you've seen, what you've heard, that you're looking forward to seeing on the field? Uh, the three that probably jump out the most, uh, number one is Lynn Bowden. He's a um, out of uh, Mark Stoops' uh, stomping grounds in Youngstown, Ohio. He's uh, listed as an athlete. He played quarterback, uh, running back. He was responsible for 57 touchdowns uh, as a senior. Um, uh, Vince Marrow, UK's uh, ace recruiting coordinator, said today, he said, quote, we think we got the best player in the state of Ohio in Bowdoin. So that's, you know, you know how good the talent is in Ohio, and that's some strong words there. Uh, The coaches are already talking about, you know, there's comparisons to uh, Randall Cobb. The coaching staff's talking about having him, you know, run the Wildcat like they did with Benny Snell. You know, this year, um, like they used to do with Randall Cobb in the past when he was at Kentucky, uh, he's probably the one who's going to come in and probably play somewhere from day one. Um, Another guy is uh, Joshua Pascal. He's a – he played defense – defensive end um, from out of Maryland. He uh, committed to Kentucky, and then Penn State made a late – made a late run at him, but he he reaffirmed, you know, his commitment and signed today – um, coaching staff, like I said, he played defensive end in college, or excuse me, in high school, but the, um, the coaching staff sees him as a linebacker, um, sort of along the lines of a Bud Dupree, you know, who is doing great things with the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And then a third, a third player is a Javante Richardson. He's a wide receiver. Um, he put up some very impressive numbers. Kentucky's deep at the wide receiver position, but, you know, they think he can come in and challenge for playing time uh, pretty much from day one. All right, Kentucky with a difficult uh, situation in regards to being on the periphery of the SEC footprint. And, and certainly when we look at ESPN's top 300 recruits, we see where Kentucky, I believe, had one out of the 300 where the SEC is accounting for about 58 or 59 percent of ESPN's mm-hmm. 300. So Kentucky with the challenges there, but meeting those challenges with the top 30 class. Now where that ranks in the SEC, well, you can do the math. It's it's certainly a difficult challenge to, to break that top 8 to 10 uh, in the conference. But uh, Kentucky coming off seven wins and a bowl appearance for the first time in a few years uh, off to a good start here to get toward uh, – breaking more goals and getting uh, achieving more goals here in 2017. Uh, Kevin McGuffey joining us from Last Word on Sports. Kevin, we appreciate the time. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it. Have a good evening.